All right, guys, I want to shift gears now, and I want to just look at a couple crazy things that uh, leftist news organizations are saying. And the first one I want to look at is this. NBC News is trying really, 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 really hard to make it seem that Republicans taking over a school district was like a bad thing. Look at this Twitter thread they wrote. They wrote this um they wrote this yesterday. And they've they've attached this article to it. I'll pull up. Trump was great at this, how conservatives transformed a Colorado school district, but they're gonna make it seem like it's bad. Check this out. I just think this is funny. New conservatives took over a Colorado school board and then adopted a right wing group social studies program, did not reapply for grants to pay counselors, and 40% of the high school's professional staff won't return next year. Do you know what I think about 40% of a high school staff not returning? I think that's a really good start myself. Does anyone else feel like that? That, like, if 40% of we just saw. We just saw in the Cambridge, Massachusetts schools how big their equity office is alone. Wouldn't it be great if 40% of them just decided to quit? (laughs) I I think that would be pretty good myself. Let's see what else they said. When a conservative slate of candidates won control of the school board in Woodland Park 18 months ago, they began making big changes to reshape the school district. After teachers protested, employees were barred from discussing the district on social media and some were forced out. Oh, so so they told employees who were getting paid a taxpayer funded salary by the school district that they couldn't shit talk the school district on social media? Oh. (laughs) Those sweeping shifts were taken from the MAGA playbook designed to catch opponents off guard, according to a board member's email. Divide, scatter, conquer, said one of the new conservative school board members, wrote to another. Trump was great at this in his first hundred days. Well, listen, at least they're learning something. At least they're learning, they're, they're, they're keeping, you know, they're, they're learning how to be somewhat strategic. I got to give them credit for that. The school board installed a new superintendent late last year. Ken Witt had previously been recalled from another school district after he blacked a pl- backed a plan to make classes more patriotic. Now, as a reminder, the teachers union in Colorado, I covered this earlier this week. The teachers union in Colorado just voted to denounce capitalism. And it was a resolution that was introduced by an actual Marxist. I covered it over on the Substack. Hang on, I'll show you if you missed uh, if you missed yesterday's stream. If you want to see evidence that uh, the Colorado School District adopted a resolution denouncing capitalism that was introduced by an actual Marxist. You can go in that article. There it is. So, so NBC News is trying to make it seem like this teacher was was forced out after saying that we should have more patriotic education. I mean, we're talking about a state in which the teachers are quite literally openly Marxist. So, of course, they're going to force out anyone that is not openly Marxist. Now, I will say this, though. I'm not in favor of any indoctrination in schools. I'm not in favor of left-wing indoctrination in schools. I'm also not in favor of right-wing indoctrination in schools. So I want to know what what that meant by more patriotic classes, because I don't, I don't want people to become robots that don't question their country. I remember what it was like to be anti-war when the war in Iraq first started. If you were anti-war when the war in Iraq first started way back in the 90s, you were labeled as a traitor because you were anti-war. And they said this is the t- this is not the time to speak out against against uh, no actually no, it wasn't even the ni- it wasn't even the 90s. It was when it was when George W. Bush was in office, wasn't it? It's like the 2000s. You were labeled a tra- No, that was September 11th. I'm 
I'm mistaking them. I thought I, I was thinking of a different thing. I'm talking about September 11th. After September 11th, if you questioned the war in Iraq at all, you were labeled as a traitor. If you questioned George W. Bush at all, you were labeled as a traitor. Thank you, guys. It took a second. I got there. Yeah, anti-war people in, in Vietnam were harassed. So I want to be very clear. I don't necessarily think that a patriotic education that teaches that if you question what's going on, that makes you a traitor. I don't think that's good either, and I wouldn't endorse it. But we also need to look at context that this person was probably forced out of being a superintendent because they're not an effing Marxist. When students protested, they called them pawns of the teachers' union. Well, they probably were pawns of the teachers' union. At the meeting in March, Witt told staff members he prioritized academic achievement, not student emotions. Well, burn the witch. My word. We are not the Department of Health and Human Services, he told teachers, according to a recording made by staff and shared with, the, with NBC News. Oh, so, so what you're saying, Colorado, what you're saying is that teachers in Colorado are secretly recording conversations with the school superintendent and then leaking them to the media? Is that what I'm getting, teachers in Colorado? So then you guys are going to have no problem at all when we infiltrate your Educator Institute for Equity and Justice conference and stream that shit all over the internet because you guys are recording your conversations with the superintendent and then leaking it to NBC News. I mean, I just think what's good for the goose is good for the gander. Is anyone else with me on that? If they can secretly record conversations, I think we can record shit too. Why not? Staff members tried to explain why it was critical to address students' emotional well-being, citing recent uh, local homicides. Employee, we had a murder-suicide. Wit, did you have a social worker at the school? Employee, yes. Wit, did it still occur? Yeah, fair question. That same week, Laura, the district's mental health supervisor, had to call had a call with Wit to press him on reapplying for $1.2 million in grants for the district's mental health professionals. Witt would not comment or commit to reapplying for the grants, and Magnuson resigned. Oh. Oh. So, basically, they fired the social-emotional learning team? That's a real shame. Zian Rogers, a sophomore, says he had a friend die and others who have and others who have depression he said he doesn't think the board understands how important mental health staff is to the district well that seems a little like emotional blackmail to me i'm just saying but it is interesting to see nbc's news uh, framing of it i wonder if when we record when we record this conference and then broadcast it all over the internet do you guys think that nbc news is going to report on it i don't think nbc news is going to report on it now, to be fair, I don't think conservative media is going to report on it either because they're fucking useless. They don't like people knowing what's really going on. But whatever. We're going to do our part. We're going to report on it. <laughs> and that's all we can really do.